Okay, so now that we know that k star is equal to s times a divided by n plus delta raised to the 1 over 1 minus beta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in to my y equals a k to the beta equation so I can solve out for y star. Because that's what I would do, right? I would just plug in whatever number this is. If I knew what the number was of k star, I would just plug it in, raise it to beta, multiply it times a, and boom. But now let's do it for a general amount. Let's do it for just the general, just general values. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that means that y star is going to equal just a times, and this is k, right? k is s times a over n plus delta raised to the 1 over 1 minus beta, but it's that whole thing raised to the beta. And you might be like, oh my god, James, this is ugly. This is awful. I hate you. I'm never taking econ again. Maybe that's true. But hopefully you'll realize that this is step by step. It's going to be really, really simple, and there's going to be some really cool things that are going to come out of this. <laughs> what I tell people when they're doing algebra is always take care of the ugly stuff first. So take care of the ugly stuff first. So we're going to work outward in. Uh, if I have an exponent raised to an exponent, we just multiply those exponents. So I can clean this up a little bit and say y star is going to be equal to a times, and I'm going to have this s times a, n plus delta. All of this is now going to be raised to the beta over 1 minus beta. Right, because so I'm just taking this and I'm multiplying these two things to bring it in. So that's not the end of the world. Okay. What I'm going to do now is, uh, since I have an A, I have my total factor productivity here, I'm going to kind of split these out. And so what do, I, what do I mean by I'm going to split these out? Let me know if you follow along with this. Y star equals A times A to the beta, 1 minus beta, times S times Oops, not A anymore. We just got rid of it, James. N plus delta to the beta over 1 minus beta. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All I did was I took this A, which is raised to the beta over 1 minus beta, and I pulled it out front. Okay. Now, I know that this is A raised to the 1. And I know that then this is a beta to the over 1 minus beta. So I know if I have a multiplied, right, if I have a multiplied exponent, I just add them up. So a so y star is going to equal a to the 1 plus beta over 1 minus beta multiplied by, and then we have this kind of term hanging out here. beta over 1 minus beta. Okay? So again, we're just taking this step by step. This algebra is straightforward. I know every single person in here can do this algebra. I want to keep this all on the same page, so let's go here. I'm going to say that this y star now is actually equal to a raised to the 1 minus beta over 1 minus beta plus beta over 1 minus beta. And the reason that I'm doing that, as I'll let you write that down, is I'm just taking 1 and I'm making it have a common denominator with the beta over 1 minus beta. Just that way I can combine those terms. Maybe it's just a little small. Oh, nope, I'm going to do that. I think it's just a little smaller, so that way I can fit everything in here. This is times that same thing, which is s n plus over n plus delta over beta 1 minus beta, right? Now, what I know here is this is 1 minus beta plus beta, 
those betas are going to cancel out. Meaning that I'm left with, when I combine these, I'm left with y equals a to the 1 over 1 minus beta times s over n plus delta times beta over 1 minus beta. And that, which I guess I could write it a little cleaner down here. Let's write it in a different color so that way we know that we finished. Your y star will always equal a 1 over 1 minus beta multiplied by s over n plus delta times the beta divided by 1 minus beta. The reason why this is important is this is where you're getting that amplification effect when we're talking about the growth paths. Notice it's getting multiplied by A raised to the 1 over 1 minus beta. So we're seeing how that's getting changed by it. So it's not just changing by the level of A, it's changing by that level of A raised to the 1 minus beta. In the Romer model next week, we're going to look at the growth of Y and the growth of A, and we're going to see how this kind of comes back.